I am KJ Waters, and the lady in purple over there is Suzanne Kalman. We are both authors. She's a traditionally published, and I am an indie, and she's actually hybrid because she does both. But we have been coming on every single week to talk about um, marketing, publishing, writing, um, lots of tools that we use to help us be more efficient in our writing. Um, and this week, uh, we're, we're Blondie and the Brit, just so you know. Um, we had a podcast that we've done 93 episodes on. You can find that over on iTunes and Podbean under Blondie and the Brit. Oh, someone's sending us hearts. Thank you, Steel City. Um, Jess, uh, there's all kinds of people coming on. Hello, everybody. So if you're interested in our other podcasts, you can go over to iTunes and find us on Blondie in the Brit. I am the Blondie. She's the Brit. Prove it, Suzanne. <laughs> you Prove- <can> speak. <laughs> yes. She's British. Yes, I'm definitely the Brit. She's the Brit. Well, I, I live in America now, but I'm from England, so which is kind of fun. I love both cultures. Yes. So oh, today, well, thank you everyone for joining. This is amazing. Yeah. We love it. We love doing this. It's all so much fun, and we've kind of had. It's been a bit of a what do you call it? A rope growth. Go rope. A go rope. This because we had internet going down. We had things exploding. It was like a horror movie, but we made it to TikTok, which is good. So we can chat to you about writing, which is what we do. So. Yes. Um, yeah, so what do you want to talk about, Cage? What's going on? Well, this week, you are going to help us be more organized. Suzanne is Miss Planner Extraordinaire. She probably has about 50 calendars up on her wall, each filled in, and she follows it like like one of those people. That's who Suzanne is. <laughs> I'm on the other end, where I'm a little more on the ADD side, where I'm just like, what am I doing today? I can't remember. So she helps me a lot with the planning and plotting, and um, today she's going to talk about a tool that we have both used. I fell off the wagon this year because we were so supposed to have a big planning meeting in January and then her life fell apart so we never actually did it and so I'm suffering a bit of a year it was a bit of a year this year yeah it's been it's been a lot but we're gonna get I'm gonna climb right back up on that wagon and uh next in a couple weeks Suzanne's coming here we're gonna do a live from Texas where I am that's gonna be exciting Um, isn't it I can't wait to have you here. It'll be really fun. So um, anyway, so today we're just going to jump right in. Suzanne, why don't you explain? And there's some tools that we're going to share. You can go first get some. First of all, KJ, I have to show my new oh, book. Yeah. Oh, it's <laughs> beautiful. Isn't it pretty? This says, when we were brave in Czech. <laughs> that's what I'm hoping it says. Because that's it's it. That's beautiful. the foreign right so. So it's really a pretty one. It's very different to my American English cover. And um, it, has, it has Paris. It has England down here. And then it has Paris up there. You oh, see? genius. That's great. I know. Interesting. I love the, I love the ribbon. Because, of course, it's set in two different places. So this is the book that... Um, that great. And then what's really nice about it is it's a hardback. Oh, my wow. My very, very first hardback book. <laughs> so very excited about that. That is gorgeous. All the Czech words you can look at. If you're Czech, if you're from the Czech Republic, you can start reading. <laughs> <laughs> Jump in there quick. Yeah, get in there quick. Yeah, so yeah. that's pretty exciting. I that is like very. That. I love it. And yeah, so I just wanted to share that because it's always fun when you get new stuff. You know, that's the thing with being an author. There's a lot of times where you are just what's the word, like plodding away, you're on your own, you know, it's seven o'clock in the morning in the middle of winter and you're like, why am I doing this again? You know, (laughs) in the middle of a second draft and you're like, and then things like this happen, you get, that's right, it's part of this big, big picture of your career and so it's always fun. Those, these are, these are the fun things when these things happen. So I just wanted to share that because that came yesterday. So that's kind of fun. Yay, Suzanne. Good job. That's exciting to have it published in all these other languages and stuff. Um, and that was one of your, that particular book is one that you won a Nichols Fellowship, or you are a semi finalist for the Nichols Fellowship, which No, that book. was, um, and that was A View Across the Rooftops. This is oh, the okay. second book. Remember, this is the one you, this is the first book I think you read about the female spy who yeah, is, yeah. they think is a German, is a Nazi sympathizer. And she goes to prove that wrong. So um, that was a fun book to write. Cool. So, <laughs> yeah, Yay. fun. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, cool. 
So the thing that we were going to talk a little bit about today, if you are writing, I'm hoping you'll enjoy this, basically um, plotting and planning, you know, um, and a lot of people are pantsers as well as, you know, you might be a pantser, but even I used to be a pantser and now I'm much more of a plotter. So you may find yourself at some point, you know, swapping over. And also if you've pantsed a novel, you may very re you may want to go in second draft with more plotting. So it's, sometimes it's good to not have both. You know, at least have some understanding of both. And so thank you for your likes. People are sending likes. Um, yeah. I just wanted to say, so um, I'm about to plot a series. I'm a little nervous. I've never plotted a series before, but I started today. So I wanted to share with you my process so you could come on board with me as I go through the series experience. Now, KJ, you've written series. I've read a, a short series of three books. This next book is a bigger one for me. It's going to be five book series with maybe, um, I'm not sure yet, but I might may have a $0 front runner, you know, like a lead magnet with short novella and lead, lead magnet for it as well. So that would end up being six books, even though the first one would be quite short. So that's a lot to plot and plan. And so, um, do you, just so it's not all my voice, what do, you, what do you do as well, KJ? What do you do when you're plotting and planning? Well, I talk to Suzanne. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I use this, the 90-day plotting thing that you're going to give us an overview of and a place to find some of these tools. Um, and it's not just like, there's two kinds of plotting for me. One is the story and the series but also, how do you, for me, I also am an author consultant, so I, I have to organize my time really well to do my own writing. Then you've got your marketing, you've got publishing, um, and then on top of that, I've got the client work. So to have something where you can keep track of all these things and the, set, the system that Suzanne's going to talk about before she gets into her series um, plotting has been super helpful because it's super only 90 helpful. days. Things change. I mean, you have different deadlines, especially if you're the publisher, things change. You have, uh, you know, deadlines shift around. 90 days is a good amount of time to get yourself figured out. And then it allows you to move things that you didn't get done or you can continue <laughs> adding stuff if you get all that stuff done. I'm just laughing because Noelle is here. And Noelle! She, said, she says your stalker has arrived. Yeah, we love our stalker. Your own yeah. favorite kind of stalker. Yes, you, gonna, and... you might like this one today, Noel, because I know you're a pantser, but we're going to be talking about how you plot, um, like how you plot a series or how you can allocate your time. I'm going to tell you how I do it, and I know I do it like I'm a little extreme, and you may want to do it differently, but I find this system really helpful. So, first of all, I want to tell you and give the kudos to the girl whose system it is, and it is a girl called Sarah Cannon, S A R R A, is how you spell Sarah. Canon is a normal what spelling and she has you can go find her on YouTube so S-A-R-R-A -R -R -A, you can find her on YouTube or you can find her um, on Instagram and other places like that but she, she she is an author herself and she has materials if you go and join her newsletter she will send you like a writer's package basically it's like a library of writers uh, materials that is just up there in her Google in your Google Docs and so I get got this from the Google Docs. And so this is, um, so the way this works, I think I'm going to pull these sheets out one at a time. We have a file that I just put together. It's a very boring, ugly file. And my husband did this. So I'm going to make it pretty. It's not make pretty it yet. Because I like it pretty. And what we, you know, you, you, we always start with, like, obviously a year calendar. So we can be counting months. So what we try and do, depending on when you want to publish, this is what you do. Let's say you want to publish at this date. You then count backwards so that you know when you're going to start and how you're going to start and what you're going to do. I think that's the easiest way. Is that what you do, KJ, when you're actually planning to write? Do you start backwards? I do, with a, with a except for that I don't, I don't always know when I'll be finished writing because mine takes longer than yours because I've got like these other things going on. Um, but once I get close, like when I'm done with my second or third draft, then I know like I pretty much know how – approximately how long it will be and then I can pick a date that fits for publishing where I'm not on vacation and it's not in the middle of Christmas it's not something where I know I'm super busy to be able to create that plan towards the publishing so you've got your publishing process then you've got your launch plan and so you can slot all those things into that calendar great so so what she does with her calendar is 
which which I think is so smart. The first thing she does is make you. Well, I'm going to show you. This is this is mine right now. But you see how it's in three months. It's, she actually works in quarters, which I think is really smart because it's easy to keep on top of one goal for a quarter. But the first thing she does is have you make you cross out every day you won't be writing. Like I cross out Christmas weeks, I cross out birthdays, I also give myself a week off. And so then you actually know realistically how many days you've got to write. I mean, if you don't do that and you think, oh, I think I'll just have it ready in six months. And then you look at your calendar and, you know, it's going to take you five months to go through editing. And you've got, you know, you can't just do that. It's yeah. best to start. I think a calendar works really well. And I think it's called the writing. Let me pull it up so I can give you the exact name of it. It's, this was her 2022 writing plan. And she starts with like figuring out exactly how many days you've got to write within the year or whatever. And then she breaks it down into months, as you can see here. So the way I work my schedule, and it's just the way that I do it, and if you can see this, what I'm doing, because I'm working a series, and this is how I write, so you might not write like this, I actually write for three hours a day, and I write, normally if I'm not, I'm just on one book, I write three different books in those three hours now the reason i do that well you people you laugh but the thing it's is we read, th we read three books and that we read three books at a time so isn't that big a deal like, and you know what's good about that kj is you feel the pressure for that hour like if you think i've got yeah. you know 17 hours to write you might write for five and then you're on social media then you write a bit longer but if you set that i set an alarm in alexa for an hour and i know when the hour's done she's going to ring sure. at me and then I really focus in on that one novel. Now, you know, the whole point is to move ahead on that one novel. And so I'm always working on, I know she's laughing at three books in machine, but you know what? You'd be amazed. Like if you just even try this, as long as you, of course, the plotting has to be done. So if you do pants, this is more challenging. It makes it easier, but I'm just yeah. saying, but even if like three books, like I'm working on. So, so what ends up happening as the series moves forward, I mean, like I start with the first book. I'm in like third draft of the first book. I'm in second draft of the second draft and I'm in first draft of the first book. So that's what I eventually end up. But because the way I work my writing and you know, KJ, I work, work the way I work, my very first draft is always done with my voice. So I'm, you know, I take a, what do you call it? I rev it or you can remember we're talking about otter last week. You can just speak your words, speak your story into the, into the otter and Otto will send you a manuscript, not a manuscript, a, a, uh, a, a transcription. Thank you, KJ. A transcription of that. And you can also hear the audio. So, so if you look into the transcription and the word doesn't make sense, you can actually listen to the word that you said and change it in editor. So I literally, here's my, this, I'm just telling you my whole day. So I get up, I do my whatever ritual, light a candle, whatever you want to do. And then I literally, I'll look, I'll put, pull up my card because I had my, all my scenes read i'll flip it over it'll tell me what i'm doing at the beginning of the scene what i'm doing in the middle of the scene and how i'm getting out of that scene and i literally will tell myself the story for five for five to ten minutes on on otter that's me done that's 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 my first draft done for that first book and then i then all i do is pull that all that information throw it into grammarly which is going to do all the fixing for me at that level editing and then i leave it and then i get onto the second book you see, so that book is ready for tomorrow. When I finish, I'll, I'll go in there and fix that up a little bit. So it's like you've got 10 minutes of talking, 40 minutes of fixing. That's that book done. Now into book two. Book two is in second draft. So for me, and everyone's drafts are different. For me, second draft is the kind of almost the hardest draft because you have bits of scenes. You have scenes, you know, that are missing. You have. So so that's that sometimes takes me longer. But I'm doing I do it all in Grammarly. I put it back in Grammarly. I'm figuring it out in there so that it's cleaning up my writing as I go along. It's putting in my full stops. It's adding my commas. It's doing everything I need to do. And I spend an hour in that book. And then in my third draft, it's already been through. And then at the end of that second draft, the second uh, hour, that goes into Scrivener. So it's so now I have a good second draft that's now in Scrivener, ready for me to mess about with in the actual work. Then my third my third hour, I go to my Scrivener and I pick up the, the third story, which is already in Scrivener. And now in my third draft, I'm really looking for word choice, envir um, environment. You know, uh, does it sound yeah. right? Are the sentences right? You'd be amazed. I mean, everyone laughs at me doing three books, but it's because you think of like the whole of three books. 
if you're working on three scenes, one is you speaking it, one you're editing it, and one you're kind of making it pretty, it's not much different than spending three hours on the same scene. Does that make sense? But you yeah. move faster because you're moving through three books at the same time. So I know it's a little crazy, but that just works for me. So so anyway, so what we've been doing is what I love. And you don't have to you don't have to work my sister. I'm just telling you this is what works for me if I'm doing so if I'm doing more than one book. Um but what what I love about her system about what you work through and then you can write in and what I do, I don't know if you can see this here, is I actually give myself a 10,000 word goal per week uh, for first draft. And that is 10 minutes speaking, 10 minutes speaking and 40 minutes cleaning up gives me 10,000 words a week. So, and then um, once I'm in one, so into that second hour, obviously I've got one chapter, I'm cleaning up one chapter, one chapter, one chapter. So um, I've been talking for a long time. Anything you want to ask me <laughs> about that? Well, I think just for anyone who hasn't heard about Otter Rev, just give them like the the quick overview of that so that they can go find those tools. I think they're very helpful. Yeah, and Sarah Cannon, remember I said S-A-R-R-A -R -R -A, Cannon is the girl who I got all these materials from. She is brilliant. She is a she is like a writing machine. You need to go follow her and and you if you if you get her newsletter, she will send you these materials for free. So um, Otter, O-T-T-E-R dot A-I, is a free software that you can, tr will do transcription for you. You speak into it and, and it will take a couple of minutes and then it will transcribe it for you on the screen. If you pay for the yearly version, which I do, I think it's like $90 a year, it's not very expensive, then that will actually send it me in a Word document. Otherwise, it's kind of not as pretty. Um, but it sends it to me in a Word document. I can put that onto my onto my laptop, straight into Grammarly, and then I'll clean it up in there. And so, um, yeah, that's Otter, free. The first, I don't know, 360 minutes per month are free. So if you don't want to, if you don't mind spending a little bit more time cleaning it up and not worried about it looking less like a transcription, it looks more like a transcription, then it's free. Go do it. I mean, who, you know, it's, your words are out and it's free. The other service that I use, which is when I'm normally, um, and I do this if I'm doing second draft writing particularly, or if I'm about to write a chapter that is really complicated with names and places, because Otter's going to get that wrong. Yeah. Whereas often when I'm in like World War II lingo, I'm using, you know, words like um, Sarah Cannon. Yeah, she is on Twitter. She's on Instagram. Go look her up on YouTube. That's where I get most of my materials. And she teaches classes. She literally just taught one that yesterday all about some plotting she was doing for her new series. Ooh. So, yes, go find her. S-A-R-R-A -R -R -A is how you spell her name, Noelle. Uh, sorry. So, yeah, so what I was saying, what was I saying? <laughs> If you I, were talking about your system that then you use okay, Rev so with Rev. more complicated. Yeah. So if I'm in you're going to give us some, you're going to give us some World War II terms. I want to hear. Oh what yeah, these are. like well, you know, it will say something like if I'm using the word captain and sergeant and just things that are more like World War II that that, that could easily be misinterpreted on um, Otter. Um, I definitely go to Rev where there's a real person who's going to transcribe it for me and I'm going to get a much better version and you're going to get all your full stops are going to be in hopefully and if they're not and you get a bad service you send it back and they redo it for you and mm -hmm. I've done that many times when I've had a bad uh, transcription because you've paid for that service and so then you they, they're like 98 to 90 99 percent accurate so they're really good so, and also if I'm on a really strict deadline and I don't, I, or I'm like, oh my gosh, I just need to rewrite this scene. I'll do it with a ref because it'll just, I know I'm going to get a really clean scene back. Fix it and sometimes enough. it's easier to like go into a scene that you've, that you've worked on and it's a mess. It's easier just to rev that back in, even though you've got most of it on the screen, than sitting for three hours trying to clean it up. Trying to clean it up. Just read question. through it, rev. And so here's a little tip for when you are speaking um, a transcription. First of all, most of us have learned to use our brain to our fingers to write. So you're thinking and then you're writing and then you're thinking and then you're writing, right? Now, when we talk, we don't do that. You and I, we don't stop. We keep moving. We keep talking because our brain is different, works differently that way. You have to train your brain if you want to make it easier for yourself to actually speak like you type. 
because you want to be able to think what color is the sun and how can I describe it as if you were writing. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah, when I'm revving, I pause a lot. I will go, one day she paused, walked, shuffled, flounced, flounced through the roses. Stop. What color are the roses? They're pink. Around, and the, you know what I mean? I literally stop and start because you want the best version of that that you can get. Whereas if you were speaking it, you're speaking it out, you're going to get, it's going to be less of a, a good a good draft for you. Do you sure. do that too when you, when you, because you, you use Rev and Otter too, right? I have to because you can't, you just can't craft story without a lot of thought and speaking, especially being an extrovert, I'm just going to fill all that time in with ums and uhs and then start a sentence that doesn't make any sense. It's like, no, 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 no. You gotta, and it took like, when I first started with this, it took me a little while. Like I got a little frustrated with myself because I was like, there is a lot of I don't know the story, but with the cards, having the cards set up, it gives you what you're going to do anyway. So that helps. You don't have to do all of that mental power stuff, but give them the, the, where they can find Rev. It's okay. Like yeah. It's just rev.com. And there are other transcription services you can use. The reason I always recommend Rev is because they turn around so fast. You literally, like, I will rev it. I will go, you now I was talking about my three-hour schedule. I will rev my first one if I'm revving. I will go to, like, clean up my second draft of my next book. When I get back, rev is ready to go. And so for me to have a transcripted, clean, transcribed service, and, and it's not cheap. I mean, it's $10, I think, for 10 minutes or something. It might be a little bit more now. But, you know, for me, where time is, I really want, do not want to spend a lot of time doing this. Some people like to write all day. That is not me. My, it's like, what can I do in three hours? Get in, get out, be done. Noelle's over here too. Hello, Noelle. And if you guys, we haven't put it up yet, but we had Noelle on the show last week. Yes, and, so and it's going up today. I just think okay. it's time to do it too, but it's going up today. Thank you, KJ. Carry on. Going up and Suzanne Kelman on YouTube and uh, KJ Waters, mine might might be tomorrow. Um, <laughs> KJ Waters um, on YouTube. So we each show that we're doing, like this one right now, will be up on YouTube as soon as we get it all figured out. It will also go out on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, and I do a little post sometimes on Instagram. If I can, I have trouble with Instagram. I don't know how you get on with Instagram. Like I find posting to TikTok easy. I find posting to Facebook easy. When I get to Instagram, there's like a million different things. Never gives me what I want. Do I want a reel? Do I want a this? Do I, yeah. I get so lost over there. You so got to do try reels. And a little bit on there too. Um, what I tend to do is do something on TikTok and just upload it, which I know is the worst thing you can do because you've got the TikTok logo in there. But sometimes it's the only way I can make it work. So, yeah. oh, yeah. uh, Noelle actually knows Sarah. Oh, how cool. Which yeah, she no. is really cool. I love her Arts. and um i follow her and she is i like the fact because she's really industrious she does the she always does the um the sprint writing where you sprint write uh particularly through nanorimo she just did camp nanorimo and um she does the um the what's name method you know where you pomodoro yeah the pomodoro method that's what she uses a lot and i so, use that too but i find alexa is great i just tell her to stop me not personally, well, the, no of her. Yeah, she knows that. I, I, I didn't think you meant personally either. It's okay, Noelle. But yeah, definitely. Sarah Cannon is a queen at this, at organizing. But yeah, if you go join her newsletter, Noelle, you'll be able to get a bunch, not just this. She shows you how to plan a series. She has a whole bunch of materials for that. She has marketing materials. And that all goes just up into your, like into your Google Docs. And you can just, I just grab stuff when I need it. And I always use her stuff for planning because I like to like cross out all my all my uh, goals and my days and everything out on that, and that little schedule. As you can see, she did a three month schedule. And so, if you don't want to write three books at a time, which a lot of people don't, I get that. What <laughs> another thing you can do is with breaking up things into three month schedules like that is give yourself three goals for your business. So one could be <clears throat> a marketing goal. One could be a writing goal because we've got to keep writing. Sure. And maybe one can be an editorial goal or something like that. Or maybe it can be a research goal. Something other than actually marketing or writing. Something that you need for your business. Like like I have a new assistant. My husband just left work today, yesterday to become my assistant, which is fabulous. <clears throat> I'm giving him a goal of like learning 
things like Tailwind, which is for, for Pinterest, which gets you up on Pinterest. And I'm going to have him looking at my recur posts. And I'm, each week, he's going to be learning a part of my business that I already do so that he can help me in that, which is going to be great. I have an idea. Tell me what you guys think, okay? So for my newsletters, I'm always looking, what can I put in the newsletter? And I thought, what if I was to write a letter, 12 letters of a story that you followed as a letter through the newsletter do you think that would be fun oh i love that like if i did a world war ii story but it's Ooh. told in letter form in my newsletter what would you think that'd be fun to because that'd be really short for me to do a letter but they could just i'd leave a little hook on like on each one you think that would work i think that's brilliant and then you're giving people part of a story instead of just marketing pieces here i'm having a sale it's like you're hooking them into your writing and your yeah story. and that's and the only piece you're... i haven't figured out yet is how do i like, I want them to be able to go back and read the rest of the story so they can get caught up in it if they do. Yeah, no else is clever. I like that. So yeah, uh, wouldn't that be fun? At sci-fi, you could do a sci-fi. I mean, uh, your, you know, whatever your genre is. Uh, some of that research that you've done, you've done so much research, like the, the Jesse Jane time. I bet you could come up with a fun story around that, that heroine, like a side story that would just yeah. be told in a letter form. So it's literally a dear, what's name? Guess what happened to me today? And then it would be the story. And then you could even have it so that we have one story and then somebody answers the letter. I don't know. I just thought it'd be kind of a fun thing to do. You could just make it from the books that you have out. Like I was thinking, as you said that, and you mentioned Jesse James, that's my third book. It could be my main character, Ronnie. Dear Steph, her best friend, guess what happened? You know, she's got some diary or something that she's with her back in time so that she can that would be so perfect would be cool fun to do yeah i do so when you're doing your three goals for the month maybe that's one of them is that you write your newsletter content you could do it all in a 90-day period do the whole year's worth yeah that's what we were talking about doing because i'm like a letter what is that 200 words i don't know how not very many to put in the newsletter and i'm not Maybe I'd put the beginning in the newsletter and they would click out to somewhere so they could read the other ones. I haven't quite figured out the logistics of it, but I think it would be really fun. And I literally did have a story. I don't know if you remember, um, I was going to do a novella with my last book, with, with Nightingale, with When the Nightingale Sings, because part, part, part of my story takes place in Hollywood and uh, in the 1940s, which is like my favorite time period of all, all time. And um, it takes place and in the Hollywood canteen which is where all the servicemen used to come and all the stars would go to the canteen and they would sign autographs and if you gave so much money you could kiss a star and they would serve the, the, all the servicemen and they would dance with them it was kind of a cool story and I came up with a story just at the canteen oh, it was really going to be a novella and so I could tell that story do you think that'd be a fun one for people I to read that- like Fantastic, because you're pulling them into that time period that you're in, but then also it connects to that one book where you have the Hollywood star and the physicist. What's the name of that one? I get your your name. Yeah, yeah. when the lights are going, I think, uh, you mean Hedy I- Lamar? Yeah, Hedy yeah. Lamar. Lamar. I, did, I did so much research on Hedy Lamar. I could tell you anything about that woman because we did so much. <laughs> and my, my assistant is in. My, he says my rates are going up. I hope your rates aren't going up too far. My husband joined me today. He's going to help me with my uh, business, which I'm so excited about. Yeah, I'm the, jealous. Um, I, need a, I need a Matt. Can you clone him and send him? Yeah, whatever? yeah, Matt. <laughs> yeah. KJ needs an assistant too. I need assistant. Actually, I have they were rebellious because I'm going to go, I'm going to go into Texas in a couple of weeks to spend some time with KJ so we can do some planning for our, our year our uh, working writing year and uh, I, he said she said bring him with you he can help us and the first thing he said was if I'm going to Texas I'm going to go and look at all the like space stuff that's there and I'm like first day and he's already rebellious what he's running off to do the fun stuff that's all right that's research right <laughs> for him no I just, I mean, space age is not world war two there we go <laughs> they've got world war two bombers still yeah so has anyone got any questions about writing like this? I mean, we, I know we all have it, but I, this is what this is how this helps me. Even if I don't stick to the schedule, this, the idea of the schedule is not that you think you're going to get it every day like a drone and write. What it does for me, it gives me a big, long overview of things that are going to come up. For example, when I was looking at when I wanted to, like, um, when I wanted to um, put in my first book, I realized I hadn't left enough time for my novella. And so then I had to work that. So this is what I like about it is it gives me big overview 
of, of what I'm going to be doing over the next few years. Because after every, every book goes into my publishers, I have to allow five months of edits. Now, during that time, there's going to be times where that's coming back. You know? <laughs> when it's coming back, I'm not editing all that time. That's five months, two, months, two weeks with her, two weeks with me. But it, it's a whole period of time where you're in editing mode. Now, there's weeks in between those where I can be writing. But you need to be aware of all that. And this helps you be aware of all this. Because how often, KJ, you know as an indie, because I've been an indie too, is you try and figure out when you're going to publish because you can push everything towards that publishing day. And it sometimes feels really overwhelming of like, when do I start and how do I decide that? And when do I figure this out? What this does, at least gives you something to aim at. And I leave a lot of, I leave myself weeks free. I take a whole month out in December, even though I may be working if my schedule is that with the publisher. But I, I take another two weeks out in January, I take a month out in July. I mean, I, it's, this isn't like I write nonstop. But I make sure that I try and pad out a lot of time for myself as well. Sure, so. sure. Yeah, no, and I think what I did, I used this system last year when I was coming up into publishing my book in September. And it was really helpful because I know in my head all the marketing steps you need to do, all the launch stuff. And to put it down on paper, it just kept it out of my head from rolling around in there stressing me out every night. I'm like, I've got the plan. So I'd look at, okay, I had a little whiteboard next to my desk and it had the whole plan just quickly bulleted for the 90 days. And then I would have, you know, I had another calendar that just had it all on there, but it was just like, okay, what am I supposed to do today? Oh, so when I'm having a day where I got up, like I was telling Suzanne, Last night I had a author support group until 10 p.m. and my daughter had to be at school at 6.15 a.m. I had like this little window of sleep. I was exhausted. So when I went downstairs, I was like, eh, nobody's up here. <laughs> <laughs> the gerbil stopped running on the wheel. So I could just look at that little thing right next to my desk and be like, ah, that's what I need to do. And then you just get in there and do it instead of having to be like spinning your wheel. So um, it was really helpful to, to get to your launch day um because there's a lot of writing stuff you've got to do you've got to do covers you've got you know especially if you're indie you've got to do all the launch marketing buy an ad for this put your book pub in do you know all the little pieces that can be really overwhelming but to have it all set out and i saved it in a word document so that the next time i launch a book i have all those steps written down and how many weeks ahead of time i should do that and i made notes of when like I didn't see so you are enough. real organized. That's what we joke about you because you're because sometimes you can struggle with that, but you are actually very organized when you do this stuff. So you now know from like I finished my what is what is what draft are you on when you're actually it's clean? Is that like a third draft for you or a fourth draft? When it's clean? All the editors, all the editors. Oh well, wow. that's probably fourth or fifth draft by right. the time they so, back. so do you know now when I've got a fifth draft and it's finished exactly how long it's going to take you to go to a launch then what you need to do as far as book covers and wow. stuff. or are you doing that in tandem well i mean i i know how long it took me on my book that was 185,000 words but i'm working on an 80,000 word wink wink because it's really 150 right now <laughs> day day but <laughs> But I have some. We, we have to tell things. you a funny story because KJ, she, we were once no, trying to sorry. figure out her Scrivener because it feel, she said it keeps telling me that I've got 250 words and I can't have 250 words in here. So she went to Scrivener to find out and they go, yeah, you've got 250 words in there. 250,000. Like, oh, I write that many words. I was like, what dedication. My God, you wrote 250,000 <laughs> Yes. Well, I had book three and four. Thank you. <laughs> but that was a nice thing. What a nice surprise, you see. You didn't have one book in there. You had like three books in there that you didn't even know that you had. That was so cool. So what we did, wasn't it? All you did, KJ, was she kind of took the book where it needed to be, swiddled up that ending, and then she, you already had like, what, 70,000 words of the next book or something. It was brilliant. What did I What did I do with the ending? You twiddled up the ending. I I twiddled at the end. That's right. I did. I twiddled it up. <laughs> uh, but you yes. are very committed. So, I mean, that's a lot of words. You wrote a lot of words. I'm good at writing, writing lots of words. What I'm not good at is writing less, as I found out. <laughs> I, I have a plan. 
there's like this whole bunch where I wrote two different chapters of the same thing with alternate endings. So there's a lot of the stuff that'll get lopped out. And then I have a secret weapon. My development editor, Cameron, is going to oh, help me Cameron. chop out, like, there's this thread that you could put into the second book of the series. And there, you know, the top of this chapter, you're just kind of not, you don't need this part. So I'm hoping that he can help me cut down some of that stuff. Oh, I'm he's brilliant for that. Part. Yeah, I'm not yeah, used to writing Cameron's short drama. Yeah. So anyway, I am excited. He's at, I've scheduled him for the end of September to really light a fire under me. So I'm not doing three books at once. I'm doing one book. And I do like Suzanne. I wake up. I have to get my kids to school. But I spend three hours. Anymore. I work till noon. Whether I got up at six or eight. I mean, I work till noon on my stuff. So my my I get my own fresh brain and then when I get to the end of that time then I move I actually exercise and then I go into my client work but it's really helpful to have that dedicated time for a long number of years I didn't have I was like I'd write in between stuff but everything else ends up taking precedence you've got all these little fires to put out laundry your kids your work various things so then I dedicated the time to get my work done at the beginning and then the structure um, that Suzanne has explained today with um, Sarah Cannon is allowing me to then make sure that I fit in during my client time, fit in my own marketing stuff, my own, um, you know, you're planning for your lunch and all those other pieces. So um, it's been very helpful. I've been loving watching your journey because I can remember you didn't even have a oh. dedicated workspace to start with. Do you remember you, we actually kind of, we talked about that and I said how important my workspace was and you ended up changing, moving your basement around and figuring out how to have an office down there. And because I remember when I met you, you were like writing in the car and, you know, you were, I mean, you were doing, this is why I just think you're amazing, KJ, because you were just oh. committed anyway, even though you didn't have the special space and the special candle, you still managed to get all those words out because you were committed to your craft and you wrote that book for a long time the very first book and so I know that you are always going to get better and better at what you do because you've always had that drive you know oh, yeah. to get yeah. things finished well thanks Ron yeah. Chapman's on here hey Ron, hey, Ron. how's it How going doing man good to, to see you I'm not really seeing you but you know what I mean <laughs> glad you made it um yeah so Suzanne is right when my kids were younger I had three kids home and each of them went to a different school and so it was like the morning routine was this dramatic thing and then we had ballet and we had gymnastics and we had you know everything going on um I would write in the car she's got really super smart kids I'm just telling you now they're like <laughs> champion kids so not only did she have to deal she didn't deal with these really clever kids that did millions of different things you know <laughs> thank you yes i'm proud of my kids but i, I ended up <laughs> having i was like spread all over the place in ballet i'd work for half an hour and then you know try not to talk to the other parents and then i'd be driving <laughs> somewhere else and i would have 13 minutes over here you know it's like kind of a mess but now that my kids I have one kid in high school now and so it makes it a lot easier but Suzanne kind of was like yes dedicated space so we had a basement full of old toys um and so I was like okay I'm claiming this is my space my husband painted it for me and got it all nice and set up and we put a couple desks down there and um, I have a couch and a TV and it's like a little lounge area. So it's, it really did help me because then I can just leave all my stuff set up. I've got like Suzanne has calendars everywhere and reminders. It wasn't me living out of my laptop in the car and everything else. It was a place that I could feel like it. As soon as I sit down, I'm ready to write some, there's something about having a, a particular spot. And it used to be for me, it used to be when I would go to um, a certain Starbucks, not any Starbucks, just this one. I had <laughs> written there enough that as soon as I sat down and got stopped being distracted by all the people around, I, I could get into that little brainwave where I could write. Now it's my basement. Now I have that one little spot that as soon as I sit down, especially if I make sure first thing in the morning, I don't even look at my emails because then I get on all these rabbit holes of getting all that stuff done. So um, it's been really helpful. And then this this structure that she's talking about. So so I think this is a really important thing to just stress, because if you are starting out, I think there is always a like a tendency to not take it seriously, to say, oh, I'm just writing a little story on the side. And and you almost put down what you're doing and why you're doing. Oh, I'm doing my real job. And then, you know, when I got five minutes. I'm, and I think that one of the big shifts for me, even before I was earning an income, 
right from the beginning, I treated this like a job very, very early on. I mean, I didn't earn anything of my, of my writing for years. Fortunately, I loved it, but I didn't earn anything off it for years, yeah. you know, but I always got up on a Monday morning and it was Monday and I worked. I mean, I was lucky. I didn't, ha I, ha I was homeschooling Chris. So I had a bit of, I didn't have to take kids back and forward. I still had to work with him, but he didn't get up till 10. So I would actually, like you, I would get up early in the morning and that, that time was, and I gave myself a, a space to do it in. And I made sure that it felt like a real job. I gave myself emails that had Suzanne Kalman author on it. I did all the things that I felt made me feel professional. And I think sometimes um, that's really important because I think when you take yourself seriously, other people take you seriously. And so I think that if you are one of these people, hi, Derek. Derek's down here yeah. too. <laughs> did he, has he been over with you too? Yeah. Hi, that's why I smiled. Derek. <laughs> We get I love all our little people on Friday. It's all on sofa. We're talking about writing. You guys who are at Noel, you're on. Derek, do you have dedicated writing spaces? And what is your thing that helps you get in the zone? If you've got something, I'd love to know. Or you're another writer that's in here and just kind of listening. Just yeah. let us know what works for you. Is Ron Chapman still there? We could ask him yeah. if he's still around. I know what Ron does, but I would like to hear it from him. He posts pictures on Facebook of, hey, he goes to this certain park. It's a beautiful little park he lives in. I hope I can say where he lives. He lives in up, up, upper near the Great Lakes area. I'll just be general. But he's got this beautiful park and he has that's this picnic table that he, he writes at. He calls it his Zen time. And so he does, he gets rid of all the distractions at home, I guess, and comes out and writes. Okay, so Derek says, uh, like my lap, take my laptop everywhere. So everywhere is my writing space. Hey, I've been wow. there, Derek. Yeah, he's been there. <laughs> he's done that. That it's was cool. Me. Yeah. So let's do a but shout out for books. books. So Noel, don't forget oh. Noel's book is coming out. If you guys are listening to this, she oh, has yeah. a new book yeah. coming out. Twenty one Ripley Street. Is that right? Did I get the number right? It's Ripley Street. It's a thriller. It sounds really scary. Um, uh, what well, scary just psychologically scary like not like i don't think it's like ripper scary but it just felt six. it's six ripley six. avenue you were six. close ripley I was, I was completely off six ripley <laughs> avenue for noel and what about derek what's derek writing and what is um ron writing if anyone's listening to this we always like to give our authors a shout out so if you are yeah. an author let us know what you're writing so we can shout out for you because this just yeah. doesn't go on tiktok this goes on youtube and goes on all of the places and we love to support authors yes so derek's gonna tell us again but it's soracore his is coming out really soon um, I know he's got beta readers looking at it. I was looking at his Facebook post today. Uh, Derek Bourne, B-O-U-R-N-E. You can find him on Facebook. He has a dedicated like Facebook group that helps him with his writing. And he's got a huge fan base. So Zoracore wow. Salvation is currently with my editor for its final post. Sorry, I have my phone on a stand here. <laughs> Good job, Derek. That's it's exciting. <laughs> Dodging and weaving. <laughs> I'm sorry, I look a little psycho. Um, but yeah, so he's right there. Uh, and he says, KJ, there's no you in Bourne. Oh, I'm sorry, B O R N E. He's not related to Jason. <laughs> Jason Bourne from that. Uh, it's CJ doesn't know about Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. I know Jason Bourne. It's, my husband's a big fan. Are you still on, Matthew? Oh. If you're still on, give us a heart. You have to just tap the screen. And that puts hearts up so I know that you're still there. That's easier than you writing something. <laughs> you don't trust him. We have her. Well, he just I know he's not writing is not his he's a great he's gonna be great as an assistant, but like writing isn't the thing he always loves doing. So if you just tap the screen hand, that'll just put hearts up, then I'll know that you've heard me. Are you still there, writing assistant? Or I lost you already. I've only had you he's, for three hours. He's looking up already. airplanes online. <laughs> So in case you're wondering what I'm talking about, my husband, who's worked in the aerospace industry for 42 years, is it, honey? Oh, I'm here yeah. working on your schedule. <laughs> oh, he's it's so fun. 42 years, was it? Or 40? It was a, and he literally retired yesterday and started working for me today. <laughs> KJ says to me, she says, 
you didn't even give him a day off. I'm like, we haven't got time for a day off. I'm actually working really. Um, we're, we're luck on a deadline right now. I need help. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of fun. 41 okay, so years. He was. Jer- Derek just said, I just wrote an end credit scene, but um, I can't read. I'm sorry. I got to lift up my phone for this. <laughs> I just read a... Uh, He says he just read an end credit scene. That's the three projects together. Oh, that's great. And I just sent myself likes. Hey, now I know how to do it. I like Can I send myself likes? That's kind of cool. I did, but when I picked up my phone, sorry. Stevie Beckos just joined. Hello, Stevie. I'm glad you're here. Good job. Um, Derek, that sounds... That sounds really neat. So you have you're finalizing your series with this book, Derek. Is that what you're doing? Sounds like it. We should at some point for all these people that come on regularly have book covers. I forget to do that just so we can show them. Yes, we that absolutely need to do that. Hey, yeah. Derek, you got me on Facebook. Send me your book covers. We'll plop them up next time if we can figure out how to do it. And yeah, how to that's do the it. thing. Yeah. We're all people, so sometimes that's hard. We've, but like we've got Matthew. Her husband, her assistant, can do it. Yeah, <laughs> Matthew, my assistant can do it. That's a good yeah, idea. We'll just get because he's so he's not doing anything but working on my schedule right now. Got only one job. Like, yeah, all right. Okay, so Ron says Monday to Friday he does most of his writing in his car on his lunch break. Well, that's good. You have a set structure. Yeah, so that's the same thing as what you were talking about. Like in Bali, I've got thirteen minutes now. It doesn't really, I don't think it matters. It doesn't have to be a physical building. It just has to be something that in your brain tells you I'm in writing space. Right. You know, because I do think that helps. I don't write as well in the house as I do in my studio. Like I will literally get really distracted on all Facebook and I don't, I don't even realize it's small. Not even, it's not even like I'm aware of it. I'm not even conscious of it. But the minute yeah. I get into my writing space, I'm in writing mode and it really does help me a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ron also says Saturday and Sunday in the park at 6 a.m. What? What? 6 you write at 6 a.m.? Dude, what are you doing? I guess that's what you have to do to get it done, though. Good job. That's, that's impressive. what you have to do. He probably has a full-time job and has to be somewhere else yeah. at 7, I'm guessing. Yeah. He does. Well, I'm wondering, too, like, he lives uh, in the cold part of the country. Does I guess that's why he's in his car. If it's winter and there's snow everywhere, he's not sitting in the park, but very interesting well i love hearing what other people do i mean i think both of us have changed our process as we've gone along and then of course as you get more serious about it you have to get that dedicated time like derek and ron both they have sounds like they're putting it as much as they can and um that's how you get the work done you got to sit your butt in the seat and actually do the writing do the right? work exactly let's talk about it this plan that you're making doesn't just work itself out you actually have to sit down and Right. Even yeah. if you planned it all out. So it does take Well, a lot and you know what? To be fair, there's days where I have terrible writing days. You know, I just make that commitment. You know, there's days when I write, I think, I think two days ago I wrote something and I go, my a three year old could write better writing than this. But you know what? It's like, okay, it's done. I made the effort. I was here. I turned up. The next day, it looks better. It's just you, your brain's in different yeah. places, but it's just making the commitment to it. You it know? is. And, yeah. Can't make progress without dedicating the time. Yeah, that's how I was this morning. I was like, my my writing was so bad just because I was tired and kind of had all these things <laughs> going on. Um, Matt, is, Matt is posted on here. When can I have lunch? Is he going to be trouble? Is this going to be trouble? You don't is, feed is him. this much can... trouble for Boeing? Does Boeing want him back? He's getting sassy with his new boss. I can't even believe <laughs> that. Honey, we've only just started two hours ago. You want lunch already? Can we just have breakfast? <laughs> Is he like the um the hobbits that have like third lunch and fourth lunch? Yeah, third breakfast. Third I don't know. Breakfast. He just wants to get out of doing the schedule, I think. <laughs> oh, here's Ron. He's giving us the scoop. Ron writes horror, young adult, and he's working on poetry and romance. Oh, my God. You're just hitting them all, aren't Wow, you? that's all over the board, that is. That Interesting. Is a, imagine Ron's brain. He must just have, like, the brain. Horror and poetry? Wow. Okay, you go, girl. I'm impressed. <laughs> good job, Ron. I'm impressed, too. That's pretty good. I like that. And he's expanding his horizons, too, because I know he started with horror. His first book is called Kringle. That's right. And it's horror. Oh, it's like a, this is the Kringle guy. This is and the Kringle guy. Because I love Christmas and I'm scared. 
Yes. By the way, Noel, thank you for the likes. Noel is sending us likes. I don't know what happened to Matt sending likes. He's just gone off to eat somewhere, I think. <laughs> he slouched off into a corner and he's not I sending me any likes. But that's... We got to give him a gold star. This is his first day on the job. Hey, I gave him a badge. I gave a him badge. a badge. So he was, I wanted him to fit with this because he doesn't have, <clears throat> there's no like medical plan. <laughs> <laughs> there's no incentive there's no 401k there's Doesn't no pension a... plan but it does have a badge a badge that that was cute you should she sent me a picture of the badge thank you for the likes noelle i appreciate it yeah. um and since she's sending us likes we should say the name of her book again when is the release day noelle we were talking uh, i don't know if you were on when we were talking about your i got i kind of got your screen up your title but i got it right in the end hey you remembered it so Oh, was I, it cage? I, have notes. I have notes from last week. Six Ripley Avenue. Um, and I can't remember the date, but her other book is called uh, Dead Inside. Dead Inside. She, and that, yeah, that really, would do really well. So if and you want to go and read some scary stuff, go read Noelle's writing if you like. Right. That. And her name her name is Noelle Holton, right? And yeah. she's a pantser. Noelle with two L's. Oh, and it comes out on September 27th. You know, that's my lucky day, 27. So oh, how can we it forget? It is? Yeah. Okay, no, we so. We need to have a party for Noelle. We need to do something fun, Noelle. Because you're here every week. <laughs> yes. We <laughs> should talk. We should do, what day is, what's the closest Friday? We should do like a little launch thing for Noelle. Where we'll wear then, hats and avatars. You're over. here right before that. You and I could have her on Again, I mean, I don't know if we want to do it again, but I'm saying we could do a little. Noel, party. if you wanted to come back and have both of us, which I don't know whether that was, but we are literally. I'm going to be in Texas when your book comes out, which means that we can be on the same screen, which means we won't have to do the weird what somebody didn't get in thing because that felt a bit like KJ didn't get invited to the party. I got left <laughs> out last week. Everybody was terrible. <laughs> So if you're up for that, then we I think we need to do a party thing for Noel. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing with being a, a, an author. So we KJ and I used to do Facebook parties. We actually had a blast doing it. And yeah. we used to like we used to do like for our launch, we used to do these big Facebook parties. We had competitions, we had games. We used to get a lot of people, didn't we, KJ to our party? Yeah. And it, but it was a lot of work. To- it was a lot of work, but like when I launched my short story, it got to number eight right away. I had strep throat and I didn't feel good. And Suzanne's like, you know, the next morning, she's like, you know that your book's at number eight right now. And I was like, what? So it yeah, just from the party. Noelle, yeah. Noelle says, oh, you guys, heart, heart, heart. And then she says, thank you for sure. So we'll we'll figure that out. And then even um, if you come on for like a short period of time, I don't expect you've got to come on for the whole hour if you don't want to. Yeah. But I definitely think we need a hat and we need a picture of the book and we need to do it like a little... Noel dance kind of thing or something. Yeah. I don't know. We need to you do something. Send me a copy of the book here at my house ahead of time if you feel like it. And then we could there have you it. go. Then we can then we can do that with it. <laughs> <laughs> now Ron says Crinkle 2 is finished. He's just waiting on the cover to release it. Ooh, that's exciting. Wow, is that, that is and are you gonna try is he gonna try and release it before like for Christmas? So it's ready oh, for Christmas. Is that his plan? I bet I bet he is because if he's just about finished and just waiting on the cover, this is the perfect time to release a Christmas horror story. Yeah, <laughs> horror story. Is there <laughs> any wrong time to release a Christmas horror story? I don't know. Before I, Christmas, I was, yeah. Chris Matthew said he loves his badge. <laughs> oh. He should come on screen. Can he come into your little space? There yeah, today? come on screen, Matthew. Come on introduce in. Introduce your new assistant. Don't Everyone needs. Hi, introduce my new assistant he's working hard Are you, we'll see if he's really listening now because if he turns up because right. you know he's probably eating lunch he right now there's probably crisps like missing down his <laughs> he's got coffee i know my husband so ron says he's going to do his best for a christmas release and then noelle says she says oh, i would love uh, i love but the paperback isn't released until october 13th um okay Oops, sorry. So when's the paperback released? Here's my new employee. Oh, God. Here he is. There he is. He's my Hello, first Matthew. TikTok appearance. Yay! You're famous sure. now. Tell everybody what it's like working for me. It used to be a lot quieter at Boeing. All this TikTok <laughs> chatting. Goodness gracious. Very hard to concentrate. <laughs> Trying to do a schedule here. 
Ah, this work's getting in the way of your work. I hate hey, it. Show me your badge. Show me your nice badge. See, look. Get a nice look. You need to get closer to the camera, I think. Where's what does it say? It says, you can't see it because it's backwards, can you? It says, oh. it says grounded. It says grounded, yeah. Because it's come out of the aerospace industry. And then it says Matt Wilson, author, assistant. Very lovely. I love it. There you go. <laughs> You're official. Let the fun begin. <laughs> No, I, I'm so excited. I mean, I've, I've obviously watched and seen uh, these two uh, develop their writing over the years. And um, and I know they both were very hard at it. Sue, in particular, began on scripts and she's done plays and other books. And there's there's a lot of stuff in the sidelines that just needs to be put out there. And so we're going to have fun doing that. Um, just getting, you know, you, you all know if you've written something and it's sat on your shelf, what's the point? You've got to yeah. get it out there. You know, it's uh, it's part of your wonderful expression. So that's so that's what I'm going to help doing. Yeah. So I'm excited. As well as scheduling. That. As well as scheduling, yeah. yeah that's that's, that's, that's part. Yeah, and if I come we'll to Texas, I'm, I'm going to go to the air museums first, <laughs> and then I'll do yes. anything you like, AJ. No, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're welcome. We would love to have you. You can take my car and drive wherever you want. Perfect. All right. <laughs> Me and your husband will go and have some fun. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Bonding. All right, I've got to get back to a schedule. So uh... yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need Jump you. See, like, Noelle needs you as well, honey. We can rent yeah. you out. Okay. KJ wants to buy you. Noelle wants to buy you. Gross. I am kicking around now. <laughs> I'm kicking around. Good, <laughs> have fun, hon. It's awesome. really helpful. Just you know what I love. I mean, like obviously he's learning a whole new skill because like he's from the aerospace industry. This is nothing yeah. like the aerospace industry. But like it's so nice having somebody else energetically to talk to. Like even just talking through scheduling, yeah. having somebody like go, Well, why don't you try this? So why don't you it's just so nice I'm trying to figure it all out in your own head, you know? Yep. Why do you think I invited you here, Suzanne? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have fun. So it, yeah. so let's just tell everybody, when will that be? Is that three weeks time? It is September twenty fourth. Yeah. In the evening. We'll be there until October. First, so we have so almost... right, like right before October first. So whatever, what's the last day in September? 29th, 30, 31? That's all like that. I don't know. Thirty days has September, so thirtieth. So the thirtieth September will be on here. We're going to do a little thing for for Noel because she's got a thing, and we will um, be like doing all. In fact, we will probably do some planning for this while we're together for uh, each week. And guys, if you have any ideas of things you want to talk about, we just come up with things that, that whatever, this is what I'm working on today. So I thought right. this is what I would do. But if you have an idea and go, gosh, I've always wondered more about audiobooks or I've always wondered more about whatever, let us know because we would love to help in any way we can and research and then chat to you guys. We love you guys. We do. We love y'all. <laughs> Three o'clock on the dot over here where I am. I know we're ready to go, girl. We've done our, our hour. I gotta go back to scheduling, which will be so much fun. <laughs> so. I, I'm going to, I don't even know. I haven't thought past now. This is why this is the difference between us. You have your whole day figured out. I don't. I'm just trying to make it through. Well, that. you know why my day's figured out? Because I've got I'm meeting with my editor on Tuesday and okay. I want to at least go with something on paper before I talk to her. Because I want to, you know, be realistic about my, my expectation of what what I can physically do. So it's only because I'm on a deadline. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't be doing that today. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, I have some client stuff. But um, Ron says, have a great weekend, ladies. You too, Ron. You too, Everybody you guys. Knows. And bye, Noel. Lovely bye, Noel. Well. Bye, Matt. Bye, Thanks Sarah. very much for your help. Yes. And bye, you. Ron. But did, did the other guy disappear? Did the other guy go? There um, is probably, I'm not sure. I don't see you, but... Thanks for stopping by, everybody, and we look forward to seeing you next Friday. Take Exciting care. Bye. Have a good writing week. Speak soon. Bye. Bye. Hello, this is Blondie and the Brit of Writing, Publishing, and Beyond. Join us on TikTok on Fridays, 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. See you there.